Hey Carefree Kids, good to see you guys. Hopefully we can see you in person very soon. But we're going to go into worship here in a little bit. We're gonna have a little bit of a lesson as well. But first, let's practice that memory verse that we started last week, all right? So remember, it is in the book of Ephesians. It's chapter two, verse eight, and it says, God's grace has saved you because of your faith in Christ. Your salvation doesn't come from anything you do. It is God's gift. So let's remember that this week. Let us focus on that. But first, let us grab a snack, maybe. Sit back, relax. Or if you don't want to relax, stand up and get ready for worship. Come on, I'll see you guys after. Times is you I see I 
66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Acts, chapter 17, Verses 16 through 34. Wherever Paul went, he boldly preached the good news of Jesus. This Jesus I'm telling you about is the Messiah. Many Jews and Greeks believed in Jesus, but in nearly every town, a group of Jews would gather to oppose Paul. He and his companions were forced out of Thessalonica, and then later that same group of Jews followed to run Paul out of Berea. Eventually, the believers helped Paul escape to the coast where he could travel by boat to Athens. Tell Silas and Timothy to join me as soon as they can. Once Paul reached Athens, he walked the streets of the ancient city, disturbed by what he saw, carved and molded statues everywhere. Statues of their gods. The people really believe false gods can help them. In fact, the Athenians believed in around 30,000 false gods. Yeah, they believed these gods were in charge of everything from uh, sports to sleep to doors and cleanliness. A god of grapes. Okay. While Paul waited for his friends, he visited the Jewish synagogue to tell Jews and Greeks alike about Jesus. And in the marketplace, he spoke to anybody who would listen. You have to hear about Jesus. He was killed, but he came back to life. Paul's words stirred up a group of Athenian thinkers. These men felt that they could uh, achieve perfection through knowledge and wisdom. Can you explain what this fellow is chattering about? He seems to be telling us about gods we've never heard of. We shall take this Paul to a meeting of the Areopagus. There, we shall reason it out. Set high on an outcropping of rock, the Areopagus was the high court of Athens. And from this viewpoint, Paul could see all of Athens spread out below him. Closer at hand, the gathered Epicureans and Stoics studied Paul. What is this new teaching you're giving us? You have some strange ideas we've never heard before. Hmm, we would like to know what they mean. <sighs> Paul took a deep breath. These people treated new ideas like playthings, so he wanted to connect the story of Jesus with something they already knew. People of Athens, I see that you are very religious in every way. We are aware of this. Please proceed. Paul recalled a small carved altar he had discovered while exploring the city. As I walked around, I looked carefully at the things you worship. I, I even found an altar with to an unknown God written on it. Now, I'm going to tell you about this unknown God. Paul explained to them that the true God created the entire world and everything in it. He created each individual person with a purpose and an adventure to live. He did it 
so that people would seek him and find him, even though he is not far from any of us. Preposterous. Continue. Paul knew that these Athenians might listen to the words of their own writers that might actually reflect something of who God is. In him we live and move and exist. As some of your own poets have also said, we are his children. Uh, an, an interesting point. Paul told them that people are God's children. God is alive and real, not some carved statue or molded from gold. And now by sending Jesus, God was telling everyone everywhere to turn away from the bad things they've done and to follow him. God has proved this to everyone by raising Jesus from the dead. Preposterous! Fascinating. More like fantasy. Get this joker out of here. No, 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 no. This is new, uh, fresh. We will hear you speak about this again sometime. A man called Dionysius had been among the crowd at the Areopagus. He hurried to catch up as Paul left. I want to know more about this living God, about Jesus. I can help you, friend. So Paul continued to spread the good news and love of Jesus. And after a short time, Dionysius became a follower of Jesus, as well as a woman named Damaris and several others. What an incredible story. And what we learned was this place had gods for everything. They had gods for maybe even like schools. They had gods for grapes, maybe even gummies or something like that. I mean, I like gummies, but we don't need a God for gummies because there's only one true God. And that's what Paul was talking about. And that's what he told everybody in that town. And some people, a lot of people started to believe in Jesus Christ as, as their Lord and Savior. And it's such an incredible thing when that happens. And what all Paul also teaches us is that no matter how old you are, you can be used by God. So God wants you to invite your friends to church. He wants you to invite them to watch the service online together. Whatever it might be, God wants to use you right here, right now. Would you guys pray with me real quick? God, thank you for today. Thank you for all that you give us. Thank you for allowing us to be with our families during this time. God, we ask for your hand to come upon us, that you protect us, and that you lead us and encourage us in all that we do. And thank you, God, for gummies. They are delicious. In Jesus' name, amen. We'll see you guys next week. Bye!